It's a beautiful day in British Columbia, Canada, and I thought it'd be a nice day to do an overview of my 2009 Mustang Coyote Swap. Uh, what I did is I took a 2009 V6 Mustang. It had a blown engine, so I was able to buy it quite inexpensively. And uh, just stripped it right down to just a bare body and then took everything from a wrecked 2014 GT and put it in here. And the reason I did this way as opposed to just swapping the engine is uh, there's several reasons. Uh, first, the Coyote engine does not match up to anything on the V609 Mustang. The transmission bell housing is different. Uh, rear end is way too light. Uh, drive shaft is different. So that really wasn't an option. Uh, but even if it was, uh, if I was able to start with the GT, I might have been able to use the transmission and drivetrain. But I would still have to get um, uh, different modules to make the uh, Coyote engine work in this body. And they're fairly expensive. And I think you might also lose some of the functionality of uh, your gauges and accessories inside the car after doing the swap. Doing the swap this way was time consuming, but uh, for the most part, really not that difficult. Um, most of the components, the engine, transmission, rear axle, uh, major mechanical components were a direct swap across the two vehicles. Uh, just basically unbolt them from one car and bolt them into the other. Uh, so that wasn't too bad. Uh, the interior too, for the most part, was just a direct bolt in. Uh, the biggest thing was getting the wiring harness swapped over and to do that you have to strip it right down and pull the wiring harness out completely, label everything, make sure you know where everything goes, uh, put it into this new body and once it's in place yeah you can just drop everything in and basically plug and play everything works. Uh, some of the changes though between the 09 and the 14 uh, are the doors and although they look very similar inside they're quite a bit different. Uh, the power motor is different inside of it, the locking mechanism is different, and so I had to modify the power window motor a little bit to make it work, modify the inside of the doors a little bit to make it work. Um, luckily the door panels, I was able to make them fit in there and they look like they belong there, at least I think they do. Uh, but underneath the door panel, there's a lot of changes that had to be made to uh, make everything work in there. And as you can see on the outside, uh, the mirrors too are from a 14, so they're a little bit different from uh, what the 09 are. And I think they, uh, my personal opinion is they look a little bit better as well. Uh, also too, the antenna now lives on the back fender. It used to sit up front, and I did, just did kind of a crude... Uh, plug there for the hole right now. I plan on making that a little bit nicer in the future, but for right now that will do. And of course the wheels are uh, different from um, what the uh, 09 had. Uh, biggest change from the back, well there's two things. Most obvious looking at is the uh, dual exhaust. Uh, the V6 only had a single exhaust. This one's got the dual exhaust from the GT. And then also too I was able to make the uh, taillights on here sequential so they flash sequentially for turn signals like they did on the 14. Uh, that was one of the major modifications I had to do to make that work. The uh, 14 has LED taillights, this is incandescent and uh, took a lot of relays, uh, potentiometers, some diodes uh, to make that all work and I had to do that to uh, kind of fool the computer into thinking that there's still LED taillights and uh, not throw a code. Uh, but now they work well. Uh, they work as they should and don't throw a code. Uh, inside, uh, the last code I finally got rid of was related to the airbags. Uh, the 14 had been in an accident and the driver's side airbag had been deployed. Uh, I was able to replace that with the 09 airbag. And I also had to um, use the seat belt tensioners from the 09 because uh, they were locked up. So I switched over all those components and I was still getting a code for the airbags. And it turned out the module itself was locked. 
So I had to take that in or send it off and, and get it reprogrammed so it was unlocked. And I got it back thinking that would fix all the problems. It didn't. Um, I couldn't get rid of it with my code reader. Uh, so I took it into a local shop in town here and they were really good. All they had to do is basically uh, reset it. And uh, he was saying that uh, with the more expensive code readers, there's more modules internally that are reset. And um, yeah, the code's gone. So I'm quite happy about that. There's no codes left on it. And basically the last thing I've got to do is uh, take it in for a wheel alignment. I've got an appointment this week for, for that. The reason I've got to take it in for a wheel alignment or should take it into a wheel alignment because I changed out the steering rack. It is now electric power steering on this where before it was hydraulic power steering and uh, put different struts on and I uh, might notice that it sits a little bit lower. That's the uh, it had lowering springs on it, the 14, so I swapped those over. So I thought with all those changes, uh, I should really take it in for an alignment, even though it does seem to, to drive really well right now. Uh, speaking of, uh, of driving it, uh, yeah, huge difference. I, I never had a chance to drive this particular uh, car when it was a V6 because the engine was blown, but I've driven other V6 Mustangs of this generation and uh, night and day difference uh, after the swap here. Basically it doubles the horsepower from what the V6 had and uh, yeah, handles completely different, just a completely different experience than what uh, what it was with the uh, with the 09, so really happy about that. I'll just uh, open up the door and I'd like to see the interior a little bit closer. Uh, it was a California special that this interior came out of. You can see that on the seat here is GTCS. And uh, that was for California special. I think it's fitting now because CS could also stand for Coyote Swap. Uh, very nice seats. It's got the navigation and everything in it, so it was an upgraded model. Uh, also has the uh, imitation carbon fiber dash, which I think looks really nice with the white body. Uh, the standard GT comes kind of with a brushed aluminum plate in the dash there. I like the carbon fiber look with the, the black car. Uh, I had the upgraded stereo system too. I haven't put the big amplifier or um, woofer in the trunk yet. Uh, I'll see if uh, I'll, I might do that later. Right now I kind of enjoy having a larger trunk than having the big boom box in there. But uh, that might happen someday. I'll pop the hood so you can take a look at... Uh, at the engine and it fit really nice in here and basically looks almost identical to what it did in the uh, excuse the weird camera angle as I put the prop rod in place basically looks the same way it did in the 2014 um, had to drill some more holes to get the wiring to match up uh, another area where it differed considerably uh, from the 09 was the firewall. Had to change the hole in the firewall for the air conditioning to go through. And uh, also the wiring harness, the holes were a little bit different for that, so I had to change that and put different grommets in. Uh, but it really wasn't uh, that bad to do all that. I was able to uh, recharge the air conditioning, so that all works again, which is fantastic. Um, yeah, so that's uh, about it. Um, I'm thinking about uh, doing another video with a uh, cost breakdown. Like, uh, I think it's quite a bit cheaper doing the swap this way as opposed to uh, going with the modules and just swapping the engine over. And uh, I'm thinking of telling up all my expenses and doing a how much is this, does it cost video. If you'd like to see that, uh, please uh, let me know, and I might do that sometime in the future. Thanks for watching.